Hello, and welcome to the Breaking System Capstone presentation. Our capstone consists of Christian Mora, Clayton Yang, Jero Hatfield, Mustafa Almohassan, Sergio Amador, and myself, Ulysses Olvera. The client for our project is Viking Motorsports, the FSAE team based here at PSU. The objective for our project this year was to design, validate, and test a braking system package for our client's 2021 competition car. This entails analyzing tire data for our client's selected tires, selecting rotor materials, calipers, and master cylinders based on cost and performance. The performance measures for this project include locking up all four tires of a roughly 900 pound car. The brake pad and rotor must not degradate due to heat generation from aggressive braking and endurance testing. The brake pad and rotor must be durable enough to last the length of the endurance testing. And finally, all components must not fail in the most extreme conditions. So, what's a braking system and how does it work? You may be familiar with a braking system if you own a car. When you press on the brake pedal, your car slows down or it's held at a stop. This is done in most cases because of a hydraulic braking system that consists of two pistons, the master cylinder and the brake caliper. Mechanically, this system is an example of Pascal's principle. A driver applies force to a brake pedal that multiplies the force with its mechanical advantage. This brake pedal force is then applied to the piston of the master cylinder. The master cylinder works in conjunction with the pistons of the brake caliper under Pascal's principle. The force applied to one piston, times its diameter, is equal to the force of the piston fluidly coupled to it, times its diameter. The mechanical advantage of the system is calculated by dividing the diameter of the acting piston by the diameter of the reacting piston, meaning a small reacting piston diameter and a large acting piston diameter increases the pedal force even further. The pressure of the caliper pistons place on the pads, the brake pads friction coefficient, and other geometric measurements are then used to calculate braking force and ultimately if the braking package will reach the lockup force. Unlike what you may be used to, the braking system of the competition car must be capable of track use. Although the components don't change, the conditions brakes are put in far surpass what you would expect in everyday driving. Our system will experience aggressive braking over a long period of time in endurance testing and must be capable of completing the brake test in which all four tires lock up after accelerating to 40 miles an hour. Because of this, every component has to be selected to be capable of handling these conditions. <laughs> The first key aspect of our project is the tire data. Tire data tells us our lockup force, the maximum braking load a tire can sustain before its connection to the road is broken. This information is important since failing to lock up the wheels during brake testing at competition is an immediate disqualification. To find the lockup force, we use the data given by FSAE on the team selected tires, and with the help of a MATLAB script, we separate the data in the conditions we expect, conditions such as load on the tire and camber angle, from this, we found that the lockup force for each tire is 1800 newtons. With this information, we were able to make the calculations necessary to select master cylinders for selected calipers. The first component we selected was the caliper. A brake caliper works by clamping down on a rotor with a brake pad that grabs onto the rotor and slows it down, while turning mechanical energy into thermal energy. One of the main restrictions given to the team by VMS was the rim diameter. The rims they selected had an inner radius of 10 inches, meaning our caliper and rotor package would need to be less than 10 inches across. Because of this, the caliper's bore, the piston head diameter, was not considered when making the selection. The team opted instead to make the master cylinder's bore work around the calipers. Caliper selection came down to cost and minimum rotor diameter because of our budget and packaging limitations. Wilwood calipers ended up being our main consideration due to their low cost, high availability, and small minimum rotor diameter. Our two main considerations in the Willow catalog were the Billet and the GP200s. Of the two, the Billet was by far the best candidate. It had the lowest minimum rotor diameter, was fairly priced, and had more pad options. However, the GP200s were free. VMS had purchased these calipers before the capstone was even formed. Although they had lower pad options, the minimum rotor size was efficient, for our packaging, and the cost was unmatched. Once the calipers were selected, the next step was to select pads and rotor material. Willwood has an extensive amount of information on each caliper's pads, their compounds, and the recommended use. 
This, however, also limited the amount of rotor material options available to us. The rotor materials that the pads could be used with included aluminum, cast iron, stainless steel, and titanium. When selecting rotor materials, the team considered cost, thermal properties, mechanical properties, and machinability. Cost was a concern for budgeting purposes. Thermal properties due to the concern of degradation of rotors at high temperatures, particularly in hard braking conditions over long periods of time, and mechanical properties as the rotor would need to be able to handle the loads on it without yielding. Cost and machinability removed titanium. Cast iron, although cheap and easy to machine, did not come in the appropriate planks, removing it as an option as well. Ultimately, aluminum was selected along with aluminum-specific pads for initial testing. This resulted in extreme wear of the pads. Most of the pads only lasted a few laps around a small course before no braking component was left at all. In the end, the BP-20 pads and stainless steel rotors were recommended due to VMS's previous experience with them and lack of testing capability for safety concerns around COVID-19. We looked at the thermal properties to ensure the rotors would not degradate and whether or not drilled rotors would aid in cooling. The first models were from aluminum 7075. Below are the model's values in contrast to the values recorded during testing. Notably, the two followed very closely, showcasing the accuracy of our model. When modeling for heat loss, aluminum, expectedly, showed promising results. However, for the reasons given before, the team moved away from aluminum. It was also noted when braking from 100 km an hour to 20 km an hour, the rotors reached an asymptote where cooling balanced with the heat input. Stainless steel's asymptote was noticeably lower than its melting temperature. When modeling the effects of drilled rotors, aluminum 7075, 6061, 316 stainless steel, and cast iron were used. The results of the models showed little noticeable change in the heating of the rotor and a drop of 10 degrees Celsius in the cooling of the rotor. A closer look at aluminum 7075 shows the effect of drilled rotors when cooling. The final component is the master cylinder. Given what the team had to work with, the master cylinder could not be appropriately selected until VMS selected the pedal length or mechanical advantage. The pedal's mechanical advantage directly affects the amount of force the driver can exert to the master cylinder, resulting in a direct influence on the force the caliper exerts. Moreover, it also affects the feel of the brake pedal from the driver's perspective, whether the brake pedal is soft and easy to depress or rigid and difficult to fully depress. Because VMS had not finished their chassis model, our team could not make an exact recommendation on the master cylinders, instead opting to recommend that VMS use what they already had in their shop, the Tilton 77 series, as they would apply more pressure than needed, meaning the team could compensate by having a small mechanical advantage to fine-tune feel. The team also created a MATLAB script to calculate the amount of force the master cylinder needs to exert to lock up one wheel. This allows them to select for many master cylinders and brake pedal packages. Although the team wasn't able to validate or complete the brake package, we were able to analyze needed tire data, select calipers, test aluminum rotors, model heat transfer in the system, validate part safety, and create a means for the team to complete their selection. From here, our client needs only to finalize their design of the brake pedal package and appropriately select the master cylinders given the information and tools we will hand off to them. Some final notes on what we learned. The team learned early on that having a basic understanding of the system was critical. Understanding what we didn't have and how it affected what we could do in our project helped narrow our scope. The second thing was creating a task list and a task tracker. At many points in our project there were members without tasks. And although sometimes this was to do with the number of members we had in our group, other times it was because there was no list of tasks. Speaking to experts and communicating with vendors about their experience was also something we wish we could have done sooner. Tire data particularly benefited from communicating with our sponsors to find a MATLAB script to modify for the sole purpose of extracting longitudinal versus slip ratio. We would also like to give a special thanks to our advisor, Dr. Adesami, and VMS's Gary, David, Brandon, and Matt.